Hi guys, how's everyone doing today? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Zita. Hope everyone is having a great Easter weekend so far. So as you can tell by my voice, I'm not doing very well. I've been sick all week, so I haven't got much done this week and I didn't get a chance to edit a video for you guys. So uh, I've put together a decoupage compilation uh, some you may have seen before as they're fairly new. Some are older when I first started on YouTube less than a year ago. But um, I hope you enjoy them all and uh, it gives you some inspiration. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and don't forget to give this video a like and a comment. Uh, I thought I'd put something together for you guys this week um so i hope to see you again next week for a brand new video have a great weekend you guys i hope you have a happy easter see you soon enjoy <laughs>so guys this first diy this is a thrifted wooden box i picked it up picked up from the thrift store and i thought i'd get this for my art supplies when i'm uh, working in another room other than my craft room like right here i'm working in my living room so i cleaned this up and i scuffed it up a bit and right here i'm using a fusion paint and the color is called soapstone and i'll leave any um products that i use today that i can find online i'll leave it in the description box so if you're looking for some of these products just make sure to look in the description box and i'll leave the link if possible so right here i'm just giving the paint a little stir before i apply it and I applied two coats to this piece and after the two coats were dry I used some beautiful napkins that I had on hand and I did a little decoupage on the front of this piece and I also had an old calendar on hand that had the perfect thing in it for this piece and I used some uh, carbon paper and a paint pen to apply it So right here are the beautiful napkins that I picked up from the dollar store. I think these are hydrangeas, but I think it matches perfectly with that gray that I put on the piece. So these are two ply napkins and I just take off the, uh, the under side of the napkin and just leave the print. And I ripped part of it with my fingers and then I used some, um, um, water to um, rip the rest of the napkin just to show you the two different choices sometimes I just like to use my hands to rip it but if you're really careful and it'll rip fine but you can also use the water too if you're having a hard time just ripping it without the water and here's a calendar that I also picked up from the dollar store and the saying that I'm using says let your ideas bloom which is absolutely perfect for this art supply box and right here I'm using some carbon paper or graphite paper and I'm just cutting that down because it those sheets are quite large so I'm just cutting it down I'm gonna place that under the um, calendar saying there and i'm just going to go over that with a pencil to outline the saying that's on the calendar and then i'm going to go over that with the paint pen that i have 
So right here, I'm just measuring out where I want the saying to go on the piece uh, because I'm just going to put more of the decoupage more on one side than the other and then just a little on the uh, side next to closest to the saying. So there guys, that uh, turns out pretty good with the carbon paper. You can see the print pretty good. So if you guys don't have a cutting machine, you can always use carbon paper and print out a saying that you want on your printer or use something out of a calendar. And uh, you can very easily see it with the carbon paper. So right here, I'm just ripping out that uh, napkin with my fingers and then I'm going to get some water and a paintbrush just to show you guys the difference in the two. So I'm just placing the napkin where I want it and then I'm just going to apply that with some Mod Podge and I start from the center and work it out. So right here I'm using a white paint pen and I'm going to apply that over the lettering that I did with the carbon paper. And I did apply two coats of this uh, paint pen. I just let it dry in between the coats and then I applied another coat just to make it a little darker.
What do you think, guys? That turned out pretty good with some carbon paper and a paint pen, eh? So, like I said, if you don't have a cutting machine, this is another option for you. floral decoupage on an old wine decanter that I thrifted and I'm first applying some fusion tough coat there this is going to help the chalk paint uh, stick to the glass uh, better so I put two coats of rust-oleum uh, white linen chalk paint on there and I'm just cutting out a square of these floral napkins that I had on hand and I'm going to pull those apart because they're two ply. And then I'm just pouring some water in a little container here. And I'm going to use a brush to go around that uh, flower. And, and then I'm going to pull that apart and apply it to the uh, decanter. So I'm just putting some water on the brush there. And then I'm just going to rip it off. Go around, just be careful when you're ripping it. And I have a little Ziploc bag underneath there, and uh, that's how I'm going to be applying this um, napkin to the bottle there. So I'm just going to turn that over, and I'm going to apply my Mod Podge to that with a really soft brush here that's actually a, a makeup brush that I had and now I'm using it for my podge instead of for my face um, so it doesn't rip the napkin it's really soft so if you have some soft makeup brushes I find they work really well so I'm just turning that over now and just uh, putting that uh, flower on the jar just pressing it down lightly with that bag there and just kind of spreading it out and this way uh, the uh, Mod Podge is not going to go in places where you don't want it to go it's just on the napkin and it's not going to be outside the flower that because it gets kind of shiny and you can kind of see the Mod Podge outside so now I'm just going over the top with the Mod Podge and this turned out really really well i'm really impressed how this turned out after it dried like you, i couldn't see any mod podge on the outside it just looks like it's a part of the bottle i was really impressed how this one turned out for me so i really like that zip log zip lock bag method let me know guys what do you think of this For my next DIY, I'm just going to be decoupaging this small pot with a different napkin print. Here I'm mixing Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint and this is in the Farmhouse White. And you add one part milk powder to one part water. And just give it a stir until it's nice and smooth. And I gave this piece a couple of coats because so I wanted to distress this just a little bit. And there it's what it looks like. And these are another set of napkins that I got from the Dollar Tree. 
And these are three ply napkins, so you peel back the first two layers until you just get the printed portion. Here I'm just applying them with my Mod Podge. And these I cut out instead of kind of ripping them with my fingers. And I don't know, I think it's the edges are a little too sharp for my liking. So you'll see here that uh, I do end up changing this print and I add some of the uh, other floral napkin that I had on hand right here. This is the same print I used on the teapot, so I added some of those because I didn't really like the uh, the way the napkins turned out on the other one. So I applied this one over the top and it turned out really nice. I liked it a lot better. I like this print a lot better. And this worked out fine guys by adding the second layer of napkins on top. The piece was already dry when I did this so it worked out fine. The good thing about some of these DIYs you can kind of fix it up to the way that you want it. <laughs> You'll see how this turned out. It turned out a lot nicer than the first print. What do you guys think? Hi, I'm using an old pot from Home Depot that another flower came in. And right here, I'm gonna be using the Tim Holtz collage paper and you'll need some Mod Podge for the piece and the print that I'm using here is the entomology print so I just cut it here in about three or four pieces just so it would fit easier on the piece. Just with the curvature of the pot, I found it was easier just to cut the um, collage paper in a few pieces. So because this piece was already light colored, I didn't bother applying a paint to it. I just did it quickly. I just applied some Mod Podge and then the collage paper. What do you guys think of this collage paper? Do you guys like the print with the butterflies and the insects? I think it looks really nice. I'm not too crazy about the bugs, but I love the butterflies. 
And here I'm applying an antiquing wax because I thought that the collage paper was kind of a little stark white against the color of that pot. So I just mixed the antiquing wax with some water and I applied it with uh, old rag that I had on hand. What do you guys think? You think this antiquing wax blends it in a little better or should I have left it unwaxed? What do you guys think? Does it look better this color? That was a quick and simple DIY. For the next DIY here guys, I'm going to be doing a, an Easter mason jar. And uh, my first step here is to put some Fusion Ultra Grip on. You can also spray a Rust-Oleum Clear uh, spray on there. And this is going to help the chalk paint or whatever type of paint you're using. Um, it's going to help the chalk paint to adhere better. So. I put a couple of coats of uh, my homemade chalk paint on there and if you haven't uh, seen that video I do have a video of how to make homemade chalk paint and there's the beautiful little Easter napkins so once I gave that a uh, sanding um, I took apart my napkin here and for this decoupage I'm going to use a water method to apply it on top of this uh, jar first and then I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top of that. So first I'm going to go around with a, some water and a brush to um, tear apart my napkin here to fit on the jar. So I'm going around those two cute little bunnies there, aren't they cute? And I picked up these napkins at the dollar store guys so check your local dollar store uh, I believe I got these at the Dollarama and I don't think you guys have the Dollarama in the States for you American viewers that are watching so I'm using this uh, piece of plastic this is like uh, for going in a binder but you can also use like a Ziploc bag um, and I'm using a spray bottle of water here. I'm just going to spray the napkin and um, then I'm going to transfer it onto the bottle by putting the plastic on there and helping it off with the brush. But first I'm just going to wet this uh, paint brush here and kind of smooth out my napkin and get any wrinkles out of it. And once I have that done, I'm going to place it on top of the jar. And don't go too hard when you're doing this, guys. Just go lightly with the brush. So once uh, I have that smoothed out, you're going to take a dry rag and, uh, and uh, tap it on your napkin just to get some the excess water off. So I'm going to place my plastic around the um, bottle and then lightly take it off with your brush. Now I think for this piece the other little plastic bag would have been better for me to use like a little Ziploc bag because it was more pliable. This was a little stiffer but it came off with a little help with my brush and uh, it was easy to um, kind of uh, spread the napkin out once I had that piece of plastic off as you can see here and I'm going to rip off any excess napkin here because it is wet so it was very easy to rip off I uh, did that on the bottom as well and then I'm going to smooth out my napkin a little bit more with some more 
um, water on my brush just to get any wrinkles out there. And then once that is done, I'm going to apply some Mod Podge on top of that. Don't those bunnies look awesome, guys? Now I'm just dabbing up some of the excess water here on it, just drying it out a little more before I apply my Mod Podge. So I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge and then let that dry. And um, I'm also going to try a little different method here too, guys, just to kind of blend the napkin in with the uh, mason jar a little more. So once that is dry, um, I'm going to apply some uh, paint to kind of blend in that napkin a little bit more. But you want to, now I kind of went a little heavy on the paint there in the beginning. So um, don't do that guys, <laughs> dab off your paint, like uh, dab it off onto the paper there and kind of go around the edges of your napkin and and kind of almost like a dry brush in here. See, I'm taking some off there because I, I went a little heavy in the beginning. So then I dabbed my brush, made it more like a dry brush method and went around the edges and then kind of went around the whole mason jar again and uh, blended that paint in with the napkin and it kind of made it look like that napkin was part of the bottle. Doesn't that look awesome? It turned out really well. I'm going to be trying this method again on some other projects in the future, guys. So make sure you click that notification bell because I'm going to try some signs with this wet method as well. Doesn't that look so cute? Now, guys, you can use this to put some jelly beans in, some chocolate. Great to give a, a kid for uh, Easter. I almost said Christmas there. <laughs> uh, but uh, it'll be great for put put some candy or chocolate in there for your um, kid at Easter or even an adult. I'd love to get something like this. How about you guys? So what do you think of this wet method guys? Let me know in the comments. So this first DIY here, I'll be uh, making over this uh, rectangular cupboard door and most of these cupboard doors I picked up from the Habitat for Humanity. So you can see here I covered up the hole with some wood filler and after that was dry I sanded it down smooth and once that was done I gave it a coat of uh, black paint as the base coat because I want to uh, put a white on top of it and then distress it back. And this is just a black interior paint that I'm using here. And after the black paint was dry, I put a polyacrylic on top of that because when I distress it back, I don't want it to just distress back to the cupboard. So I'm just sealing in that black paint. So I've applied my Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint here. And right here, you'll see me doing some distresses, distressing along the uh, edges and the corners just to give it that natural distress look. And that's what it looks like when I've distressed it back to the black. And right here, I'm going to be applying some decoupage paper. And this is a Tim Holtz paper. I think this is like a numerology or something like that. It has a bunch of numbers and letters on it. Um, I will leave it in the description box uh, where I got that. Uh, so... I haven't told you what kind of DIY I'm making with this cupboard door yet, have I? So right here, I'm making actually a coat rack or, you know, somewhere you can hang your your totes, your bags, uh, anything you want. Some, some decorative piece. So I've uh, cut out the decoupage paper to fit on the inside here. And I'm just using an uh, X-Acto knife to cut along the edges so that uh, decoupage paper will fit in there nicely and how I like to apply my Mod Podge is I kind of start out like half and half so I'm starting from one end here just applying a little then smoothing it out and I have an old shower cap that I'm using here to smooth it out so you can use a plastic bag you can use a plastic glove if you have one sometimes they come in 
the hair dye kits. Um, but yeah, the plastic I find is really good for smoothing it out instead of using your fingers. Sometimes your fingers will, will uh, rip the paper. So I find the plastic works really good. So here I'm just fitting it into the corners and getting it, smoothing it all out. And you'll see in the end, like I hardly have any wrinkles here. So I find this method works really, really well. And right here, I'm going to be applying some um, knobs that I had on hand from some old cupboard doors from a long time ago. And I just kept them just in case I ever needed them. And here they are coming in handy. So I'm using that same decoupage paper and I'm cutting out some circles to apply to the uh, knobs. And I'm just wetting my little small paintbrush here and going around in a circle and then just ripping it. You could cut it as well if you'd like. So I find this tissue paper is a little harder to rip with water than um, like napkins. So here I'm just applying the Mod Podge to the, the, the knobs and I'm putting that, that uh, decoupage that I just ripped out here with uh, my paintbrush. I'm, I'm applying that on top of all of them. And then once uh, I have all of the decoupage paper applied to the top, I did apply a top coat of Mod Podge on there as well and I just let that dry overnight. As you can see there I'm applying the top coat of Mod Podge and I just let that dry overnight and uh, I applied a top coat of Mod Podge to the middle portion of the decoupage paper here as well. And right here I applied a piece of tape along the length of the cupboard door. Now I should have Put the drilled the holes in before I did all the painting and stuff but I didn't but this worked out if you put that tape there it really helps with not getting any like splits around your wood it gives it a more cleaner finish here I'm just putting the screws in and putting all those knobs on and this turned out absolutely beautiful and once I'm finished the piece, I'm just giving it a nice wax coat over the, all the areas where the paint is just to seal it in. Isn't that beautiful, guys? I'm absolutely in love with this piece. I love the black and white, too, and the little bit of distressing. And then the mob podge, uh, decoupage on the handles, I think, really sets it apart and kind of ties in with the middle. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you thought of this cupboard door DIY. Here I'm putting my black base coat of paint and uh, for this DIY, I'm making a um, planter. So I uh, had these this box here, and um, so I'm gonna attach that to the drawer piece. I'm just painting that up with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint inside, and I did the the black on the outside. But I'm also gonna paint that with the Rust-Oleum white chalk paint all the way around. And then I'm gonna apply this uh, Tim Holtz botanical paper here. And I'll put that in the description box as well. And I've used this paper quite a bit. And as you'll see here, I've run out. So luckily I had just enough to do this piece by cutting it down to where that, where I'm gonna attach that box. So I have uh, cut out a piece just to apply to the front of the box. I would have liked to apply it on the sides too, but like I said, I didn't have enough paper. I ran out because I've used this on a few DIYs. And if you'll look through my uh, videos here, you'll see some other DIYs where I've used this uh, beautiful botanical paper. It's gorgeous. Uh, so I applied it to the front of the box. And like I said, I do the half and half method. Start on uh, in the middle and go to the outside and then work from the middle to the other side. Right here I'm just uh, sanding with a fine um, grit uh, sand block 
sanding off that excess paper and then I'm applying some Mod Podge to the top of it. And I use a makeup brush guys because they're so soft. I find some of the other brushes can easily rip the paper. So if you have some old makeup brushes laying around or pick some up at the dollar store, uh, just apply it with a makeup brush. And right here I'm just applying it on the uh, drawer piece and so as you can see here it could only go down as far as the box luckily I had enough and I had to cut the decoupage paper and piece it together lengthwise because like I said just to just to line up the uh, prints and stuff like that to make it look more natural and I'm using my uh, um, shower cap plastic here to uh, smooth it out and you'll see in the end I didn't get any wrinkles or anything. I'm just distressing the side here, bringing that uh, black through, and then applying the Mod Podge on top of that decoupage paper again, just to seal it in. So you can see some of the distressing coming through. So remember to apply your polyacrylic or your sealer guys on the black paint. So when you distress it back, it doesn't go back to the cupboard door. And here I'm using my uh, battery operated nail gun uh, which is awesome this is by Ryobi don't be afraid of these guys but use safety precautions when you're operating them as you can see I put on my safety glasses make sure you do that and <laughs> always make sure you got the right length of nail in there um, because you don't want it to come through your piece if it's too long so I've nailed that in place and this is what it looks like guys isn't that beautiful you can put your beautiful plants in there and I gave that some wax as well on the sides there where the um, raw chalk paint is and this is what it looks like guys I'm loving this and I did put a hanger on the back of this too so I could hang it off my wall so you'll see it in a picture coming up here let me know what you thought of this one, guys.